What are you doing in my flowers, man? You guys notice anything different about the big pin? We got some babies out. There's just a few more goats in there now. <laughs> it actually looks a lot different with just four more goats. It really does. Hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. I'm Kyle. This is Shannon. Herc. And all them goats. That's a bunch of them. I feel like we have so much going on right now. You know, I was thinking that this morning, like <laughs> there's really a lot going on down here that we kind of need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, trying to stay focused because, you know, it's a video. we got to keep it on track, right? Well, it's also our reality. And I feel like for us to accomplish things, we kind of have to plan these things out and think through the best timing for everything, especially yeah. when you're raising like goatlets and you got a real young pup up there. You got an injured guard dog right here. All the things. <laughs> <sighs> we signed up for it and we love it. But boy, there is no shortage of work. Yeah. So, update on Hercules. We'll just get straight to it. If you saw our last video, you saw that he ripped his toenail off, his claw. At least that's what our assumption was. The vet was able to squeeze us in the very next day, which was awesome. Very nice of them. Uh, our assessment was correct. He lost his claw all the way down so that his quick, the soft cuticle underneath a dog's claw, uh, is fully exposed. And it's really not a problem as far as the claw being gone, other than obviously it's the protection of where there's blood vessels and some nerve endings and a wasp, just kidding. And so the whole idea is you don't want it to get infected. The number one thing for the dog though is it's painful. And that's why the day that it happened, of course, he yelped and then he stayed in his house for quite some time. <laughs> but he is a trooper. Hey, I'm also on painkillers, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. Is it if I'm upside down. You're upside down. Are you sure, Mom? Maybe your camera's just upside down. No. <laughs> uh, he did an awesome job. I took him out there, just had him on his regular collar and leash. And when he's outside of this pen, he's getting so much better at interaction. As long as, of course, he can be close to me or Shannon, whoever's with him. Uh, but he did a great <laughs> job. And the vet did a very good job at explaining. I kind of updated her on everything we had done. And it was exactly what you're supposed to do. Try to get it cleaned out covered up and then keep him out of mud and moisture and feces and so basically the pin. She actually showed us a pretty cool trick that I hadn't thought of because well I don't have IV bags <laughs> but she cut a hole in the IV bag at the top of the bag just big enough to get his paw down in there and then she tied it up on top put some tape around it and it worked really well till we got home. He got a little curious and he was able to kind of break the tape a bit started getting some dirt down in it. Long story short we pulled it off clean it up again, and today we're gonna to try to get a little bit thicker of an IV bag on there, which the vet said if we do that, he's okay to go in with the goats. Enter challenge number two. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. Gotta get some food flowing. You good to hang out in here for a little while, buddy? We'll get your goats taken care of. Oh, am I somewhere right now? <laughs> yeah, I'll hang out somewhere, wherever you want. Hello, YouTube, hello, my name Hercules. <laughs> I got boo boo. Let's see if I can show you. If you're queasy, might look away. It's not bad at all. It's that little red nub, equivalent to what would be like our ring finger, more or less. That's the part of the nail that bleeds if you've ever tried to trim your dog's nail. On a white dog like this with white claws, you can see that a little bit better. 
Nala, on the other hand, has black claws, so you don't really know where it's at. So we trim a little at a time and we're still working on that, but that's the sensitive part in the claw. You're so sweet, dude. <laughs> You're so sweet. Here's the thing though. Not only does Herc want to be back out with the goats, the goats want him back in there with him. And they are even sleeping out in the yard just to be closer to him. Yeah. So we really want to get him back in there as soon as possible. Yep. On that note, can we go feed Betty and just hang out in here for a little bit? Our goal today is to get that booty on him, the IV bag, and either bring him in here with the goats or get him out here to stretch his legs a little bit on the leash so that he doesn't overdo it. I know, buddy. You want to go in there, aren't you? Covered all the dirt. Hi, kids. That's a good girl, Bluesy. Is it just because you're wanting your food or are you coming around? So if you guys haven't been with us for a long time, or if you have, you know that this girl being out here is a huge change. <laughs> and it's actually the earliest that we've done this with any of our goatlets. Because not only is Blue out here, look at Blue's crew number two. Hi, Miss Daisy. Hi, Earl Man. And of course, Mr. Duke. How are you this morning? Spoiler alert, they stayed out in the pen last night with all the rest of the goats. Yeah, on a whim. We didn't even tell you we were going to do it. <laughs> we didn't even know we were going to do it. <laughs> It was just Blue was telling us, guys, uh, these guys are only about six and a half, seven weeks old, but she's weaning them much faster than Larry and Harry. In fact, it's hard to catch her nurse them anymore, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but they are eating grain, they are eating hay, and as of yesterday, they've all been down in Goatville, they were grazing. At least two of them that we know of have gotten to know our fence, our Gallagher electric fence. Somebody did hit the fence this morning too while I was outside. Oh really? Yep. <laughs> That's always a tough one, but they learn so quickly. And I think because the other goats respect that fence and because of course Blue is respecting that fence, they don't try it very often. And it's more of a mistake when it happens thereafter. But everybody's doing great. Really honestly, no big outbursts or anything. And I can tell you right now, Miss Blue knows her mama role is not quite over. She is the, oh hi sweetie. She is nothing but protective of these kiddos. And it's actually kind of funny to watch her walk these guys off whenever they get too close. Lair Bear, did you forget we had a scheduled filming this morning, bud? Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Come on, shoo. Come on, shoo. <laughs> Good job, Bluesy. Okay, okay. Let's just get you some food, what do you say? My big guy. So we'll talk about some of the, yeah, some of the relationships and things that you just witnessed. And that's Miss Blue just making sure- Oh, he's her... going after your mic. Well, mister, don't start that already. You are definitely Mario's son, you know it? Oh, pusher. Good girl, Blue. Hi, Miss Mama. What are you talking about, Daisy? You're so cute. I think she's raising three talkers. Weed man. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Spruce it loose. Well, my food out this morning. It's not out here. I'm looking for it, not finding it. Where is it in there? No, no. Just go get my food. Well, could you say please? Please do it now. <laughs> okay. Golly, mister. You're so full of attitude. Grumpy hungry guy. Koopa, little Mario, how are you? Don't get up. That's a good boy oh. there, Bear. Oh, yeah. He says, I'm sleeping, Dad. You are so handsome. You're just soaking up the rays, aren't you? There he is. Little Harry Berry. How are you, buddy? Cute as always, huh? That's awesome. Yeah. And look, we don't have to unchain and unband the pen anymore. It's actually really nice to see them all calm together early in the morning. Like yeah. we know they're all getting along. It's okay that they're all out here together. Yep. It's a good feeling. Very much so. Let's go get them some food. Sounds great. Now you guys know you're not gonna get fed in here, right? <laughs> this is not the place for you guys to be fed. Well, and this 
poses a new challenge because, 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 <laughs> <laughs> because everybody loves this nursery. This is like where most of these goatlets were raised. And so the new trick is getting these guys out and getting Blue and her crew in here. Let me come in and tease them the other way. everybody you went out on your own they all went out on their own did you already get it done that's awesome i think it's blue man she is like she just went in there and told everybody to get out this is my spot boss lady i'm so proud of her it, it saddened me to see her not nursing quite as much as for larry and harry but it's good okay. stuff okay come on mama hair bear stay up here buddy come on mama good job Keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, let's go. Let's go. Let's is that go. necessary? Come here. You're just yelling to yell at this point. Okay. <laughs> now let me go grab Harry and Larry's real quick because that, that way he doesn't try to... <laughs> you tell the story, Spruce. You're such a bully. You're such a bully, Weege. We just talking to Spruce. Is he? I, I've, I've picked up on all of them kind of doing it a little bit more. All right. Ah! Whoa! Not like Spruce talks, but you know. They can't keep up with you, can they, buddy? Larry and Harry, come on, Larry and Harry, let's go. Harry just straight up knocked the food out of one of the feeders. I mean, perfect shot, boom, out of the pen. So I had to run over there, get more feeders. I'm sweating. <laughs> when you add goats to the equation, it brings new challenges. It does. But we roll with him. It's gonna drive him nuts all day. Him and mama both. You know, probably just let him out, let him go eat it. Spruce, spruce, spruce. Spruce, I'm busy. Hey, hey, Spruce, Spruce, Psst. come here. Hey, buddy. We just going. <laughs> well, come here, Weege, right here. Hey, you might have to put it Psst. in your hand. Oh, I'm on the, I'm hey. on the outside here, Mom. Weege. I'm feeling like I'm gonna get in trouble. Hey. What's what's going on here? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yep. Mm, come yum, here. Yum. Ouija, right here. There we go. Thanks for being a vacuum, Ouija. Now Spruce is jealous. You had your chance, Spruce. <laughs> you had your chance. Well, this is a ripoff. I didn't know what you were trying to tell me. Well, you should have just trusted me. Well, I don't listen. Well, that's no joke. I mean, I do what I want. I'm Spruce. We just grinding at him. Yeah, there is definitely some communication going on. <laughs> Letting him clean this up will make it so that we don't have, I mean, otherwise it'd be him, Mama, and Luigi right all day here long. all day long. And he'd be talking and uh. So thanks, Luigi. You're actually helping out, man. Yep, no problem. No problem. Anytime, anytime. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, when it comes to food, he has no problem helping out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll come in and love on you. We just had to get the crazies fed. So I don't love putting him on pain medication. And one of the medications is actually kind of a sedative. 
Uh, so it really kind of zonks him out, or at least it did the first day. The second day, he fought it and he overcame it. Now he's exhausted. I mean, he, he sleeps really well at night to make up for it, but we don't want to keep him on the pain meds if he's not showing any pain. Now I can look at his foot and tell that he would be in pain without the medication. So I'm not pulling him off of it, but I am holding back on the one that's kind of got the sedative. You can give them both together uh, and it's twice a day. So we do it in the morning feeding again in the evening feeding, but it's really just a matter of us monitoring how he's doing and doing what's right for him. It's a good boy. So with the medication, we really like to see him eat. You know, I want him to have a full stomach when that stuff hits. So, you know, we'll keep him on the medication. Of course, if he shows pain, uh, we'll definitely keep him on it, but we're not in any rush to force him back in with the goats or anything. It's more just him and his desire to do so. And so, I don't know, we're gonna figure out something special for him so that he can stretch his legs a little bit and we're not gonna overdo it, take him on a full trail walk or anything like that, but just need to give him a little attention today, don't we, buddy? Yeah, and he really wants to be in there with the goats. Yeah. He is walking on his foot a little bit, putting some pressure, but sometimes he will, you'll see him kind of hop along on three he, legs. He just, yeah, if he passes a certain speed, like if he starts to trot, he'll pick up that back left leg and just keep it off the ground, which I love. I, yeah. It's great. Yeah, I know, buddy. We love you. It's hard, but absolutely necessary to get him healed. So even if he's a little sad or he wants to do this or wants to do that, you know, we know what's right for him and it's just going to take the time it's going to take. He creeps over into Larry's bubble just to tell Larry to move. Hey. Tell him, Larry Bear. You ain't scared, are you? You better be scared. I mean, your nickname's Little Larry for crying out loud. Man, the size difference between them two. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, he's, I mean, it ain't like he's not growing because it's almost hard to tell when you look down here now, which one's blue and which one's Larry from a yep. distance. So he's still getting bigger, but that guy is just, mm, he's a bowling ball with legs and neck nuts. <laughs> and horns, don't forget it. Jeez a wheeze. You're so sassy, Spruce. So much attitude. Well, I'm trying to tell all these goats that I'm the best one down here and not a single one but wheeze me until I smack them. <laughs> That's kind of a weird strategy. I'm kind of a weird goat. This is one of the indicators that told us you know, Blue would just sit there in daze and look out at these guys and just really show interest in getting out. And every time I would go to open the gate to feed them in the morning, she would act like, oh, are you opening it so I can come out? And we just kind of thought, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's let her. We can over plan for it, but these guys have all had goatlets introduced to the herd a few times now. So we knew they would know what to do. And we were a little nervous because Herc isn't in here to sheriff. However, Herc isn't in here to, to terrorize Blue because <laughs> he knows he's going to have to earn it back with her and vice versa when she comes out. And uh, so I think it was kind of one of those things that was just coincidence that he was injured and having to be isolated. And we thought, yeah, let's see how they do without Mr. Herc. It was good timing. It really was. And they really did good. I mean, they all came out in a big pack and moved around together and snorted and kind of hit a little bit. And then Blue made her point and the babies are safe. They're best friends, but don't tell them. They don't want people to know. This is Mario's son, to a T. Fearless. He'll go up to Ouija, stand up at him. And I think he and little Mario absolutely know that they're brothers by their father. He's brave already. He is so brave. But he's also quick. <laughs> so <laughs> if he sees one of them act or turn, he knows to turn and burn and he can fly. So a lot of you have asked about the lice treatment that we did. So our first treatment, we decided to go with a more natural route, which was the DE, the sulfur powder, and some essential oils. And to be completely honest, it worked well. Harry was super infested whenever we first treated him. 
and honestly that first treatment did really really well like we talked about it didn't get everything on that first treatment and we were going to have to treat him again we we're waiting until we had a day that was a little less windy the last several days have been super super windy and because we don't want it flying around and everybody breathing in the de we waited now that we've decided to let blue and the babies out we're going to go ahead and treat everybody with a chemical and it is a chemical that a lot of you suggested to us so it is something that we just want to be safe and make sure that everybody's got the treatment and bringing them into this atmosphere doesn't cause them to get any kind of lice or anything like that so this is technically a premise spray i believe you can dilute it you know parts per million blah 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 blah, blah. but it's a very well-known solution for the lice and basically you get one cc of it in a syringe per 25 pounds of goat so for instance larry is almost spot on 50 pounds we'll put two cc's in there hi hi dookie i want to talk about something here what do you want to talk about i like the big goat pen with the big goats do you yeah because it makes me a big goat see oh, i'm yeah. so big, big can i goat. eat your stream no okay see ya <laughs> so this is i mean it's all over you guys can go youtube it google it whatever you want and a lot of people actually use it proactively and i, I gotta admit moving forward we're probably going to add this to our annual proactive Treatment. measures treatments for the goats so it's just the cyclins i think is how you say it ultra and we will administer it by the one cc per 25 pounds i'm gonna guess on mr weege and mr spruce a little bit and i bet you weege's pushing about one and a quarter if not a little bit more we just huge. He's a big dude. And for reference. You're a big dude. When Mario, well, you know, I eat everything I want. <laughs> His brother Mario, who was super fit, didn't have all this extra weight, but did have a lot more mass and muscle up in his neck and everything. His horns were about this much longer. When we sold him, he was 95 pounds. And I, I, a lot of you are going to correct me down below. I forget exactly, but Bruce, Spruce's dad, who my older brother Chad at Doss Farms had, when he took him to auction, I believe he weighed in around 195, give or take. 175, maybe. I thought he was pushing two bills pretty hard. I don't, I don't remember. It's either 175 or 195. So this guy may be even more like one and a half or 135. I don't know, but I'm probably going to go by 125 on him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, every bit of 75, if not 100 on you, dude. You, you, got, you got some middle mass there. But we've not, have we seen lice on these two? I haven't seen any lice on those two, or mama. It's just been the littles. Yeah, so I'll probably err on the lighter side for the big guys. Uh, especially, it's just that shorter fur. They don't seem to be as susceptible as the ones with the long fur. But I really don't want, like Shannon said, I really don't want blue getting it. I don't want it passing down to the babies. Uh, but I don't know yet. I'll have to look up specifically. We're not going to do the babies until we know for sure this is okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, I got a tattle on ourselves. <laughs> we had the syringes that we were using to administer the shots for the goatlets. We've misplaced them. My shed is in utter disarray right at the moment. <laughs> so I'm going to run to town a little bit later. I'll pick up some syringes and we will apply the lice medication. Shannon and I both took separate turns going down into Goatville to see if we could find anything that showed us what happened to Hercules. Where did his claw get caught? Did he yank? Did something tear it? Either way, we're going to take extra precaution and we've, we're going into a deep clean on Goatville. We started yesterday. Shannon got a lot done. I was doing more of the dangerous stuff pickup. She's looking for more of the stuff that would like catch a paw or a hoof or something. And we're just going to do some cleanups. We'll show you that here in a second. But what kind of kickstarted this whole idea of getting blue and the babies out is just cleanliness. Because she went through that heat and mama went through that heat, it stunk in here. Her urine was just, it was nasty. And it was driving Miss Shannon crazy. <laughs> Major shout out to Shannon here. She worked her tail off in here, and then I was able to just build our mountain of spent straw even bigger. What do you do with all that stuff? I mean, well, I, I know that after a long period of time, it decomposes and becomes dirt, but 
Some of that's going to get used in my garden beds. Okay. So there will be some use for it. So what are we going to do with the other six tons of it? <laughs> it's just going to stay piled up there for now. <laughs> just let it become part Piles of Earth. Piles everywhere. Yeah. I don't know if, you know, I don't think it'll ever like dry out, dry out enough for me to put it on a fire, but maybe if I had a good hot fire. No, that's going to decompose. That's going to turn into compost. It's going to turn into a wall of straw. No, it's going to turn into a wall of dirt. All right. All right, I'll just keep piling it over there. It's all we can do right now. Yeah. And look at all the babies. Oh coming. my goodness. It's a herd of goats following us. That's a lot of goats. It's a lot of goats. And you see them all together and the babies in blue and everybody's out. That's pretty stinking cute. It's a good goat herd. And yes, we are still planning and thinking forward as to, you know, is this enough room for them? But of course, you know, we're going to get them all out and graze them before too long. And there's a random metal stick. Yep. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this land right here produces trash. Drink. And it just, I don't know, you know, I know Herc is really good at finding things and digging them up and whatever. So I don't know if he works on it, but we had this clean. I mean, to what we thought was clean. And I don't think any of it's problematic for the goat's hooves, to be honest. It's really just for Hercules. And we still got more work to do, but look at the progress. Let's go down and show them down here where we made some piles. See how they've worn out these paths. It's so cool. This is Hercules' work right here for sure. Yeah, I know the goats use this one a lot too, but from him running through it every single day, multiple times a day to get rid of the rabbits and squirrels, we are less than a week away from official spring. I do believe that has become Shannon's and my absolute favorite time of year. Because we are outside so much and have so much to do, we just love it. And you can see everything's kind of greening up, but my organic mowers won't let it grow. <laughs> that is what it would look like on the other side of the fence there in here, but they do work on it every day. I have kind of three piles started here though, of just sticks and twigs and branches and all kinds of things that were on the ground, just kind of making it hard to walk in, through here and maneuver. And so I think what we're gonna do is start with a small fire down there where there isn't a whole lot of aerial coverage. And then we'll just add to it a little bit at a time so that we can just really get this place cleaned up for them and make it to where they don't have as much stuff to try to trip over. Yeah. Hey, somebody else is enjoying your piles. Yeah. Don't, don't burn these. They've all been kind of playing in them. We just don't want you guys breaking legs or rolling ankles or Mr. Hercules ripping off any more claws. <laughs> and they They're said like, we Look will. At a snack. Thanks for putting it all in one spot. I for know. Us. The thing is, these sticks have all been in here since the dawn of Goatville. And now they want to see them because they're all in a nice handy pile for them. That's fine. They can eat on them. Look at this mower. Holy cow. I'm not a cow. <laughs> you kind of look like one right now, You do now, sort buddy. of look like one. I got to eat all this grass up before these other silly goats try to do it. I know where the good stuff is, Mom. Nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Boy, there's some big rocks right here. Some big rocks right here. <laughs> oh. We've got to have a rock party, block party, one of these days. Might even, like incentivize it somehow and get some extra hands out here to help us pick up rocks and we'll do like a rock giveaway. Come hang out with K&S <laughs> and pick up rocks for a day. You can have as many as you want. You can have every rock you pick up, every rock I pick up, Shannon picks up. You can have every rock on this land. I don't want them. I'm done with them. Take so, them home with you. There's your incentive. It's a giveaway. It's a rock giveaway. <laughs> Come help pick up rocks and we'll send them all with you. Yeah. This is truly, for Shannon and I, it's a very relieving, joyful feeling. Yeah. There's just a constant little bit of pressure uh, because it's an obligation or a responsibility when you have the goatlets to monitor how much their intake is. Is mama nursing them? You know, is their health good? When are we going to ban them? Blah, blah, blah. And a big part of that is when can we let them out and become a part of the normal routine with the rest of the goats? Yep. So this yesterday was, I, we were out here all day long and just outside in general with everybody monitoring how the kids were doing. And uh, there's a lot of deep breaths, very relieving deep breaths taken that it was going so well. 
It went smoother than I expected, yeah. to be completely honest. Well, I think a lot of it is that Herc wasn't out there because for him in blue, she was able to focus on keeping the goatlets safe and not necessarily her own self-defense. Yeah. Whereas if yeah. Herc were out there, he'd be like, oh, Blue's out. Okay, I got to remind her who's boss around here and that these goatlets are under my protection. That day will come, but he's going to be healthy first. These guys will be a little bit bigger and more acclimated with the goats already. And so I really think that'll help smooth the process even yeah. more. And I've got some more flowers to dig out of here and transplant. Yeah, those are growing up front. They haven't bloomed yet, which technically I don't think they should have. I don't think they're going to, but they're at least growing. And if I can get the rest of these out of here and I'm going to wait until the fall, I'm going to be a little bit smart about it this time. I'm going to wait till fall and then transplant those. They're a different color. They're white. And so it'd be really cool to have them on the other side of the driveway. Absolutely. I like them. Whoa. Getting a little angry, are we? You're not as nimble on those sticks as those smaller goats are, dude. I don't care. I'm coming like a wrecking ball. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I figured he has no note or tone when he's making his noises, so he's also a terrible singer. He is. Yeah, it totally so, makes sense. You are a wrecking ball too. That's right. Don't forget it, neither. He is also the acrobatic ninja of the three. I mean, even that little move right there, just <laughs> hopping his legs over to that other stick. All right, so Operation Goatville cleanup will carry forward. But you guys haven't seen somebody, at least not quite as personally, in a couple of videos. So I think we need to go get out the Brunosaurus Rex. He's growing fast and he's learning fast. Love that little guy. Hey, big guy. Brunosaurus. Hi, buddy. Come out and go potty. Come on. That's a good boy. Good boy, goodness. Somebody was sleeping hard. And you were sleeping, they? huh? Yeah. You're doing so good at no bites. Yeah. Oh, still big sleepy yawn, huh? What you think, bud? He is learning so much and is really adapting well to us. Oh, very much so. I can tell you something right now, though. This guy is a campfire dog. He likes to go up to the fire pit and the walls are tall enough that uh, he can just kind of lay underneath them and keep himself warm. And he was just cuddling between our feet while we were just hanging out talking. Nala taught him some lessons on how to be a good dog. I really do think Nala is a big influence in his she's, life. She's teaching him a lot. Hey, you know what? We won't complain if you take after your big sister. She's a princess. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the one I chase her tail, right? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. See you later. Thanks for hanging. He's either going to get a drink or he's going to take a deuce. <laughs> yeah. His number twos, we call deuce. So we praise him when he's pooping. We say, hey, good deuce, Bruno, that's a good boy. We actually did that with Nala. We trained her potty means pee. And I'm ashamed that we picked this one because I have to say it out loud in front of people sometimes. Uh, poo poo potty, that's take a dump. It's what it is. Back when we lived in the city, if she came outside and we needed her specifically to pee and poo, we would praise her on potty and poo poo potty. And she learned that each one of them means something a little different. Good boy, Bruno. So he gonna be a deucer. He likes to come out and drink like the big dogs do. I am a big dog. He's growing so fast, guys. It's happening right in front of our eyes, so I'm actually curious to hear what you think, size-wise. He's probably, what, two or three times bigger than when we first got him? I don't see how much he's grown at all. <laughs> I know, we just see him all day, every day. Bruno. He's so stinking cute. Mm-hmm. Well, and you say like this morning when he was out with you, I mean, he did his walking around with you, kind of went and... Yeah, we went and let the birds out. We checked out the front of the property. We went all over the place and he just, he follows right along with me. Well, he did I chase the birds a little bit. But saw you guys sitting out here in the rocker and he was just... He was just hanging out. Hanging out, working on his little sticks and his ball. So it's just a process, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, you're my little Brunosaurus Rex, aren't you? 
I think he's really going to be a good dog. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there you go. Campfire dog. That's exactly where he likes to lay. So Mr. Bruno's first vet visit is two days from now, Monday. He will be eight weeks old that following day on Tuesday. Yeah. And so I think that's a lot of the normal time between eight and 12 weeks about when you can kind of start flea protection, tick protection. That's what, when they get all their vaccines and shots and all that stuff, so. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that because we've been chasing him around, trying to keep him out of- uh, Everything. Everything, yeah, because guess where he wants to go? Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. But we love him and it's fun. It's a lot for him to learn. But he's becoming an amazing dog at less than eight weeks old. Yeah. Can't complain about it. Very much so. All right, guys. Well, we wore a lot of hats today. <laughs> There's a lot. There's just a lot. And, you know, you take your little wins, like getting the goatlets out and him learning no bite and he's learning to potty outside better and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. those are celebratory moments for us and we're going to keep moving forward and maybe someday we can get back to the things on our actual agenda. That'd be nice. <laughs> it would be nice. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. We thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. What are you doing?